Hey, it's just so Trish, and it's week 20 of our homeschool. I can't stand the light. Come on. All right. So this is all about being a being a minimalist. I'm not a minimalist. I'm a maximist. But can I be a minimalist in my maximist home home life lifestyle in my homeschool? We're gonna find out. Here we go. Greater is the one that is inside of me than he who is living in the world. I shouldn't really sing in person, but I totally had the most amazing time last night. He did that cover by Mercy Me, and it was just like, actually, I was having a hard time because I was holding the phone. It's like, and the whole time I wanted to be like, but I couldn't because I was holding the phone like really steadily. I was like, this is personal endurance holding the phone for a good video. Anyways, if you didn't catch it, it's right there. Anyways, back to what I'm doing. Minimalist homeschooling by a, for in a maximist world. I love ACE, but my children stopped loving ACE. And in the last four weeks, I've been kind of doing this, um, just having them do things in this like composition book. I actually kind of have school fitting in here, which is amazing. I kind of started off doing the copy work and I told you guys I was really wanting to do some Charlotte Mason style, but I'm gonna not lie. I really like Charlotte Mason and maybe if I have more training in it and I'm gonna go to the homeschool convention. Oh, by the way, if you're going to Florida homeschool convention, you got to let me know. We gotta meet up. I gotta figure out something. I gotta plan ahead and say this time I'm going to be in this place come see me like seriously come see me just getting it out there time to get thinking anyways so when i go there i think i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna be like hitting every sarah mckenzie workshop i don't know enough about charlotte mason and it does i know enough to know that it can be a lot of stuff and it's a little overwhelming and if you didn't know, and I've kind of started talking more about it again is robinson curriculum i love robinson curriculum but it can be so kind of staunch that would be a good word for it staunch and it takes a little bit of getting used to that it's not for those who use it it's wildly successful it is and it's amazing but it takes a little bit to see like all the beauty in it because it just seems so plain so with that here is what i'm going to do i am bringing in the living books I am taking out the structure and I am having my children do all their work in here. And in this sense of less structure, it will allow me to be more structured. Okay, so seriously, I'm not the most structured person. I, you know, I'm a routine person, not a schedule person. I am too much structure ACE but the structure of the workbooks <sighs> my kids just didn't care for which is really the same problem I ran into Christian light education but in the season of it I really needed that not gonna lie we have done Robinson a Robinson style curriculum before and I kind of considered it my lack of parenting but yet we had the most success in that season than ever before. So why did I leave it? Because I felt like to be a better homeschool mom, I needed more. I needed a curriculum that told me what to do all the time. I needed textbooks. And when I really got into that great video on the five flavors of homeschooling, it made me realize I don't need to be so hung up on textbooks. That's a whole different thinking. Forgive me. It will be long. Get your coffee. We're going to chat. Okay, so how am I doing this whole idea of minimalist? We're doing math, doing grammar, language arts, English, whatever you want to call it that, I don't know, there's four parts to English. It took me a couple years to really figure this out. If you need to know about that, it's right there. And then we read. And then we're letting our science and our history all happen in our living books. In my living books, because I've promised myself not to buy anything, are free 
on free domain and I'm going to show you some of that. Handicrafts and we're doing our 4-H work and that's it. So one of the things in order to keep myself minimalist and I am going to do a video on my little notebook I've put together. I've somewhat smushed some Ambleside, some Homeschool on the Hill from Candace, some Robinson all in here to make it good. And I'm serious, like the less structure it is, it allows me to make the structure I need because I don't need it overly structured. Um, Candace was her really cool page. So I just made a version of this. See that? I just made a version of this to fit me. Now listen, I know that you've asked her and I know you're probably gonna ask me like, how can I get a copy of that? You can't. You see, it is completely tailored to my children. It wouldn't make sense for you. I have three, their names are up at, well, I'm teaching four right now. Their names are up here. How would that work for you? I don't, does that understand? Does that make sense? Like, I will show you if you want how I build these charts in Word. And then that way, you can have the skill set to make your own. So I kind of put a category of everything we're doing here. So this is their Bible, this is their math, this is dictation, this is language lessons or language arts or grammar, whatever you want to call it. Here is oral grammar. I'm actually going to do some read it louds or some actual teaching. Yeah, but not every day, but most times. I'm not committing myself like that at all. Okay. IEW because that's what we use for reading because I don't actually have to participate in it that much all the time every time but I can um, my read aloud the book that this child's reading or that child's reading or that child's reading that child is not reading yet um, the handicraft they're working on their 4-H projects any nature studies and Spanish for being a minimalist schooling that's a lot of stuff, but it's not. It really, that's a lot of stuff. So if you're coming at me because you come from Robinson, you're gonna say, that is not Robinson. I know. Some of you might say, that's kind of close to Charlotte Mason. You have nature in there, you have a handicraft. I know those were my favorite things I liked about Charlotte Mason and the fact there's oral reading. There you go. How do I turn this into a minimalist? How do I make that a minimalist thing? So one, thing that I learned from Charlotte Mason is to keep lessons really short. Not my nature. I do big, huge blocks of time for one subject and I inundate them till they cry. So I'm not doing that this time. And hopefully never, ever, ever again. The Bible. I have actually removed all structured Bible from our stuff from my resources. It ended up getting us kind of tongue tied and caught up. When it comes to Bible history, my husband and I cover that really good in children's church and it pretty much covers the entire week's worth of Bible. We chronologically go through the major themes and we connect it to how, especially in the Old Testament, and we connect them to why they're New Testament important. That's our Sunday school lesson in church, children's church. It's heavy stuff. And then my children and I talk about it and we connect it how it connects through the timelines. It works out awesome. It has actually been, in the last five years, more productive doing that than it has been any curriculum I bought. So then I'm kind of like, why am I even doing a curriculum? But for Bible in our day-to-day -day life, we've been doing copy work. So this is one of my children's. This is John 1, 12 through 13. Here it is. She wrote in a cursive, isn't that pretty? Anyways, that's my 12 year old. So what happens when they write it in their copy work? Only do one to two verses at a time, at a time. And the really nice part is there's a lot more thinking going on. So the biggest thing I've been doing is copy work. Um, I have made my children do copy work. I have talked to, a 16 year old who needs tutoring. And I said, first things first, you know your math facts. I said, I want you to copy them to the point you don't even think about them. So, like any good teenager who's not my child, two weeks later, I'm like, how has your copy work going? Hmm, I 
like, well, I've done some. <sighs> yeah, that's great. She's like, I've done a few days. And let me tell you, after the few days, I've noticed just how easy it is to do my math facts. Really? But yet you stopped doing it. Well, honey, when you're done with that, we'll talk about tutoring. Not until then, because I ain't getting nothing out of it. So if you can't do your work, I don't need to invest time there. Just saying. Not all my kids know math facts. So this is my times table. I laminated them because I got kids who will draw on them. So I laminated them. And it's just for my ones that don't really have, so they can check what they've done. Or if they're brand new, they know what the numbers are. And the biggest part is making them write them across. None of this cheating stuff, one, 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 times, 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 one, two, ten. That's not going to trigger the brain. I should do a whole video just on this, huh? So we have done it this way, and it's been hugely helpful. And then I also did one for addition. So that's enough of that. So the next thing I have is language lessons. What am I using? How am I doing that? I had played around with some of the stuff I've already owned. Emma Surreal's primary language lessons. Okay, so see, I bound this. This is a free book. I'm going to do more on this, but it's a free book. If you have any experience with doing Emma Surreal's, it has a very Charlotte Mason feel. There's memorization, there's picture studies, there's just basic parts. There's copy work. They're beautiful. Um, so I just have them do one lesson maybe four times a week as it fits, as it feels, whatever. Part of my oral reading or my oral, oral lessons is we're doing Grammarland. Oh, this shine on there. Grammarland. And this is by M.L. Nesbitt. Don't worry. There's a video coming that shows you how to find all this stuff on Google, how to download and how to print. It's in the works. Trust me. Okay, so um, we're reading this and kind of pulling the Charlotte Mason thought. Don't read to the point they're oversaturated. They don't want to hear anymore. Read just a little bit. It's killing them. I'm only doing two to three pages a day and they're like, come on. I'm like, yeah. Think about that. We'll be back on that. And then my oldest is doing intermediate. So what I'm loving about these, whole another video coming on just these, is they cover multiple years. And this covers three years. So maybe 100 lessons, maybe not really. Some are harder, some are easier. So instead of me being caught up, we got to do this many lessons in this days. I can't have that. That messes with my brain. Like seriously messes with my brain. I'm not like functioning because it messes with my brain. No, I can't do that. That's the same thing with this one too. Over a couple years. I can't really divide it up. And that's okay. So like if they have a memorization... They're not moving on until they memorize it. And if they're having a hard time memorizing, it means they're just going to copy it over and over and over again until they get it. No need to rush it. All right, so that's what I do with my grammar, with my language lessons. That's my oral lessons. Sometimes we're going to do sentence diagramming because I have a Rod and Staff book and I have that information. And I'm going to teach my children some sentence diagramming. It would have helped me. I'm assuming it will help them. I could be wrong, but I'm okay with that. Couldn't figure out what I wanted to do for spelling. I was, I told you a little bit about dictation. I like the idea of dictation. I was doing Psalms 100, but I really felt like I needed something more. And I was really like looking at simply Charlotte Mason has like this little like dictation thing. And I was like, oh, that is so cute. I like it. I like the little things that's going on and blah, 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 blah. Well, I found one. I found like a whole set. So these are called um, Dictation Day by Day, A Modern Speller. And then they have like third year, fourth year. They even have like two books that actually cover everything they've got. But I like the layout of these better. And what I like is they actually put the words that they think will be the most problemsome on the side. And so there's the dictation. So there's day one. The children who did not study their lessons last term are sorry now. Are you one of these lazy children? I don't know. I think it's cute. I have one for each grade. And so I gave my third grader the third grade book. I gave my fifth grader the fourth grade book. I gave my sixth grader the sixth grade book. Don't be fooled. A hundred years ago, this stuff would challenge me. 
not going to lie. But it's been really neat because it makes them really think about the structure of the sentence, not just the spelling. And then it puts it into years. So then what do I do with these spelling words or this spelling? Well, here's my daughter's. Live for something. Write, it says, write your name with kindness, love, and mercy on the hearts of thousands you come in contact with year by year, and you will never be forgotten. Chalmers. Beautiful, right? I love it. This is a long video. So what I do is I come in here, and I'm like, listen, you should not have capitalized these. You should have not, you should have put a comma. You should not have put a comma. Um, and then I showed her which one she got wrong. She did them a hundred, a hundred times, 10 times. She had to write them. Left it at that. So I got two choices. We do it and do it again until it's perfect. We revisit it one time or we just move on. So what do I do? I don't know. I just kind of decide as we go. Yeah, I do. Um, the last time, because I, I knew some of them had some sentence structure issues and all of that. I went ahead and said, you know what? They were great things to really put into your brain. The, the dictation was, and I'm like, let's revisit it one more time. When my daughter did it, she copied it. All of her spelling was correct. She just forgot to capitalize something. And I was like, um, hello, what do sentences start with? Oh yeah. Capital. There you go. There you go. All right. So anyways, no, I'm not going to quiz the spelling. I'm just going to do dictation. You know, doing dictation takes a lot of brain work and really it catches everything we're trying to teach. And so instead of teaching all the little parts, I'm just going to do the actual main exercise and let all the little parts catch up. And whether or not they mastered that spelling word or not, I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the next dictation. That word will show back up in their life. Trust me. Forgotten? Oh yeah, it will be there. AEW. Well, I'm going to say about once or twice a week, we're going to do an IEW lesson. We're not going to do the cute notebook he talks about. We should, but that's more stuff. I got six kids. I can't handle more stuff. We're going to do all the work in here. And then the final draft, we're going to do on a piece of paper. Done. All the resources and stuff. I'm just going to make something like this. They'll be fine. Really? That's it. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, as for books, I love the Robinson curriculum. It is one of my favorites. And I have printed tons of their books and I've bound them. They're beautiful. Actually, one of my oldest videos and one of my best videos that is done for things has been how to bind books. Actually, I remade it so it was much better and I did a voiceover right here. But there's so many different ways to bind books and I actually do them all because I'm that way. Whatever's easiest at the moment. So I've taken the actual Robinson curriculum book list and I put it in page protectors so I don't feel the need to cross and check things just so I have a reference point. And I'm waiting to unpack my boxes into the schoolhouse to see what books made it, what books have it before I start printing. So until then, using our AC readers, because why not? So right now I'm pulling out the, um, these are just AC e-readers, Beyond the Next Mountain, Saved at Sea, and The Little Pilgrim's Progress. And I'm just using those because I have them on hand and they're here. Not a big deal. I just have them read probably half a chapter a day. Done. 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 That's it. And we move on because that's the Charlotte Mason way. Robinson curriculum would be go read for two hours. Charlotte Mason says, let their brain have time to take morsels to chew on versus engulfing them and they can't really spend a lot of time thinking in it. So that's what I'm doing. I have printed these books out. These books are so cool. So I have the boy craft and I have the handicraft for girls. Only a page or two a day because again, I want their brains to be thinking, what year is this book? 1916. It's a hundred years old. All right, one of the things I love, okay, I'm sorry, but like this whole like nonsense that girls don't get to do things and this is like an age old thing that we're fighting is BS. This is not, this is a new thing. This is probably in the last 40 or 50 years. I'm serious. Cause in 1916, the very first thing they covered was carpentry that girls can do. Before you get your panties in a wad, let me just say, it ain't what you're thinking. 
they're doing some stuff. It talks about how to hammer. It talks about the right way to put wood together. I love the pictures. The pictures are fantastic. I mean, it's like how to build a table. I'm serious. I'm serious. They're not doing that in shop class. I don't even think they're doing it in shop class when I went to school. So, I mean, it's in depth. Now, they're kind of girl-minded. So, they talk about why the reasons a girl would want to do this and what's the girl's purpose versus a boy's purpose. And, like, the boy is building a dollhouse for his sister as a gift. So, it's really much like, hey, for girls, find things and build things that are useful to your life and your family. And here's how to make gifts and have joy. Boys, it's how to be industrious and provide for others. They're still kind of the same means, but it's the girl's emotional side. It's the boy's emotional side. Women are counselors. They take care. They're compassionate. They're caretakers. Men are providers. It's that thinking. Skills are almost exactly the same. Just saying. So before y'all like, my girl needs a boy craft one because they ain't going to be making dolls. It's not that way. So I have them read a page or two. Nothing much. I'm just trying to spike their interest. It's huge. It's like 400 pages. Do you not see? It's cool. I love it. I love it. Um, so we do that. We have 4-H stuff to do. Like, we have all of our thank you letters to write. So I write them in there. Or if we need to work on our stuff. I'm just giving myself a spot. Nature. I got a couple of nature books. No. There you go. I got some basic nature books. I got some other stuff that we'll just pull from. Or maybe we're just going to go and draw. This is where I'm going to pull some of our artwork in and bring art in. Kind of the Charlotte Mason nature feel done. Some of these bad boys. Remember? Remember the video I did? I may be running out of cards. I'll put them all down here, those videos I referenced. So instead of me going, we have to immerse in this, it's going to be... Like the one day was watch the number song, which remember I have the whole playlist that goes with that. With this, if you didn't see that video because I made it at the beginning of the year and you're a new subscriber, these from Sam's, I have a whole video list of the things I found on YouTube that do all the audio learning for what you need to learn to use these. And some of them for each lesson, I have more than one video because I don't know what is really going to stick to my kids. Okay, that's it. So now you're kind of like, but Trish, where's your science? Where's your history? Well, you see, I have great books. Got great books and I cannot lie. Oh, I said I wasn't going to sing. Okay, thing. I do have some of these here. So here's the thing. These are some of my original binding books. I have a couple of them here. But in my collection, I have an amazing set of... History. History is totally covered, actually. In fact, more than you realize. It is intense and enjoyable because it's a story. Um, I like this one, too. This is C.C. Long, the home. I think I did a video on this, too. Anyways, it's very, like, you read it, and it actually tells you things to do, and it's very practical. Love it. Um, I have lamplighter books. One of the main reasons why I got went with the lamplighter books... So they're 1865. Oh my goodness. I read a lot of these and I'm crying. Anyways, I like them because they're beautiful. I could print these. Yeah, no big deal. I could totally be printing these. If I could like work out a deal with Mark Hamby, who is the big guru of this, I would tell him my entire list that I expect him to print so I could use nothing but lamplighters for our school books. But I haven't been able to talk him into that yet. I love this. I'm on the subscription plan, so I get one book a month. It's perfect. I have a beautiful library because of it. Um, science. How in the world are you going to do science with living books? How am I going to do science? Right here. Here's a great one. There's a lot of them. I mean, Tom Swift is awesome. I mean, that is all boy science all right there. Or girl, whatever, whatever. I mean, I'm an engineer. I'm not saying that science is not for girls. I just think it's fun. Anyways, so here's a great one written in the 1830s, and it's um, Rollo's Philosophies. It's all storybook style, but this one's all about his philosophies on water. Some basic science. There's one on air. There's one on fire. There's one on earth. Four great little books. 
that covers physical science. Now, is it going to give you homework stuff? No, no, no. But it talks about hydraulics. What textbook is talking about hydraulics? This is a great one. There are some questions at the end. There's actually comprehension questions right here at the end of each chapter. It's fantastic. Good book. And so there's more of those. I'm actually going to do a full video series once I get all of these printed and re read them and review them. But there you go. So it's a lot of little things, I admit. It is. But the structure is there, but it's not like in your face. This is what you have to do. So I pulled off from Candace's whole little worksheet style. I built it. I just have two pages on because that's all it fits on a page. I don't pre-number them. I'm not laying them out. I'm kind of doing a little amble side. And I'll talk about that later where I'm saying this is my expectation for the week. And then I take that and I kind of break it up as it goes. It works out nice. We're only spending 10 to 15 minutes in a thing and yet we naturally progress and it doesn't take a lot of work. Oh my goodness, this is such a long video. So anyways, there you go. There's my minimalist video of our week. This is so much information. I will do some spin-off videos so you can really hone into the specifics of what I'm doing. Do I think this is going to work? I sure hope so. If I get overwhelmed and crazy, do I think I could sustain this? I hope so. I think so. It seems like a lot and it covers a lot, but it doesn't seem overwhelming. I think the changing up and it requiring my children to put forth in their composition books has changed their attitude in the way they're going. Our handwriting is phenomenal now. It is better than any, oh yeah, no handwriting work. We're doing enough handwriting. We're going to get it. All right, anyways, I better go. I know it's been a while. Half hour. Peace out. Until next time. I have some more videos. I'm feeling chatty. Now it's just having the time to edit them. I'll talk to you later though. Seriously.